So today we're going to be testing out the new iPhone battery testing box that we have over at Android Gadgets. Uh, it also tests out the iPads, the Apple Watches, and more. And we're also going to compare it to the old school Kaisi battery activation board, um, as you can see right here. If you don't have the Kaisi board, I mean, a lot of them look just like this. They're all basically the exact same thing. Uh, but what we're going to do is going to, we're going to see what the Kaisi board can do for you and what the uh, new one can really do for you. So today we're going to use our XCAT battery because we know that this bad boy right here is going to be able to pass basically all the tests that we could throw at it. Um, and so let's go ahead and use this bad boy. All right. All right, so first we're gonna go ahead and plug in our XCAT battery into the activation board. Uh, so the activation board is meant to do two things. First, it brings the battery past a low voltage point. Um, and sometimes the battery does not activate in the phone. It won't work until you apply a little bit of voltage to it. So that's basically what we're gonna have to do right here. Um, so now on top of the voltage, you'll see at the very top uh, right here, is an amp meter. So this shows the power going into the battery. It also does have a USB connection on the side, so you can use it to charge up the battery if needed. But to be honest with you, that's really about where the features end on these activation boards. They're pretty simple, they're pretty basic. They don't really have that much going on. Um, they're pretty low quality, to be honest with you. Their, their charging circuits don't properly charge batteries and the stage is needed to do it effectively for the battery to get the best possible charge. So, I mean, there's there's really not much you can do with these activation boards. You just see voltage, amperage, and you can charge them up, but I don't even recommend charging them up with those. All right, so now let's get started on our cell phone battery testing box and see how this just differs from the traditional testing boxes um, that are out in the market. So first we'll go over the complex test right here and see how that works. Uh, as you can see, there are a few different options here, um, like the the current charge, discharge, a test report, um, so on and so forth. But basically you can kind of just check these off one by one um, on what you're going to do and what you can see uh, from the complex test. All right. Um, additionally, you're going to see like a, a little calibration mode button right here. And I don't really know why they called it a calibration mode. All it really does is just skip the current and discharge. All right, let's go ahead and plug this in. And what we're gonna get from this is the internal resistance and the battery voltage, pretty basic. Um, and then of course, on the very bottom, it's gonna give us a pass test uh, for this right here. Now, before we do the over discharge testing, you, you wanna make sure that your battery is between 30 and 80%, all right? The battery is gonna be pulling and discharging, so you need to ensure you have enough juice to do all these tests, and obviously not too much juice, all right? Now, our XCAP right here has about 50% charge, so it's right in the middle of all that, and perfectly good to go, all right? Now, let's go ahead and plug this guy in and see if we get a pass. All right, there you go. It says test pass right there. Um, now, it's also important to note on the overcurrent, or, sorry, overcharge current or discharge current, that if you get a straight line through either of these, that the battery is likely fine. You probably just did not have the opportunity for the battery to kick in fast enough to properly do the test. So I recommend just unplugging the battery, giving it a few seconds, and then plugging it back in. Um, now, I also recommend making sure that the battery capacity is over the 30% minimum mark, or that it's also not over the 80% mark. Uh, so you definitely wanna make sure that those two are within the 30 to 80%, like we originally stated. All right, now let's go ahead and back out of here and do the battery info check. All right, now this is where you're gonna spend most of your time. Uh, in here, you're gonna see basically battery type, chem ID, temperature it's operating at, uh, your milliamperage, your voltage, the core chip, which is gonna be BQ or SN or aftermarket, uh, whatever Texas instrument chip it is. All right, um, and that's what you're gonna see right there. All right, and then you'll see the temperature actually change. Like when I put my finger over the gas gauge, you're actually gonna see the battery temperature increasing. Everything is dynamic here. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's real time, it's not static. Another really cool thing is the health right here. You'll see 113% um, health on our, our uh, display. Um, that's one thing that Apple battery health will not show. It caps out at 100%. And now since this is an extended capacity board, it will actually show the percentage over original that you have on your board. 
Now at the bottom here, don't click efficiency set or cycle set. Efficiency is directly related to the health right here. Um, and then if we jump over to poor gam, which is supposed to be programmed by the way, you can change all these options here like design capacity, cycle time, battery health, etc. Now, word of warning, if you want your battery to not work properly, change these settings. Changing the serial number is fine, but changing any other stuff is the quickest way you can mess up your battery. You will damage the programming on your battery. So don't mess with these. Don't play around with them. I mean, you can change your serial. There's really no reason to change your serial, but outside of that, don't really mess with these. You will mess up your battery. All right. Now uh, let's go to the battery program, which you might think, hey, I just saw that. Not really. Well, this one's a little bit cooler. All right. So we're going to go ahead and click this guy and we're going to click menu and then we're going to click menu again and then we're on this page right here all right so you will see df read and df write uh, this is the data file which houses all the programming of the gas gauge you see uh, you can actually copy this data from one battery to another uh, you can actually read it here and you'll you'll see the the progress bar once i click read at the bottom of this uh screen um, now there really is no reason to read the data from one battery to another unless you're like trying to copy over data from one battery that's original to another battery that's original. Um, I know some of you guys have watched the video of the 10Rs, 10S, and 10S Maxes. That still doesn't work. You cannot copy over the TI chipsets on the 10Rs and stuff. Uh, so there's no point in that. All right, so I've copied that battery data over and I've got some random iPhone 7 battery here. It's just a regular aftermarket battery and you'll see some of the data already here. I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in and I'm going to write that data over. You'll see the progress bar on the bottom left and it's writing the data. And once it's fully read, you will see an update to the battery information. Uh, what you'll actually see now is the full capacity has changed to the 2200 plus amperage. Um, and that's obviously not real amperage. And after a full cycle, this will actually reset to the true amperage of the battery. Um, so th once again, there's really no reason to copy it from one battery to another of their aftermarket. You're really just wanting to copy this information. If uh, you're trying to get a phone to read a battery as original, um, and if it is original or something like that. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, plug our XCAT battery back into the battery tester box and check this out ta-da uh, what's really cool about this is it actually has computer software for you to all right so we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure our, our device is obviously plugged in if it's not showing the box ID up at the top then it's not reading it properly uh, but you will go ahead and press read and then and then R said fail so you want to get to that screen um, and then once it's on that screen, then it's properly reading the battery information, the design capacity, the core chip, full capacity, on, so on and so forth. All right, so here, like if you wanted to change the serial number, you would go ahead and copy, paste it, whatever you want. Um, and then if you wanted to change any information here, you could go ahead and press the write button and it would write that information to this battery and completely change some of the information. Once again, don't play around too much with like the, the capacity, the core chip, all that stuff. Uh, just don't mess with it. All right, so let's go ahead and back out of here again. Um, and just for a notation, you do want to be in the battery information check for that program to work properly. We didn't need any drivers for it. It seemed to work right out of the box. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the uh, right side, and then we're going to go to the battery charge test. Um, you're going to see this really cool graph over here, obviously. And on the bottom of the screen, you're going to see uh, increased current. You're going to see uh, the decreased current. And obviously, you can increase and decrease the current going to the battery um, and kind of just mess with the test right there. All right, and then now we can, of course, start the test. And we have started the test. Now, on the bottom, you're going to see the capacity. This is the capacity that the uh, the machine has dumped into the battery. Um, now, I will say that this is not 100% accurate, but it's pretty darn close. Um, and then you also see, obviously, how long it's been testing and either charging or whatever to the battery. All right, so you will have that information. Now, if you want something to show the true capacity it's pumped in, you're probably going to need like a, a real battery tester that the big factories have. 
Um, so as amazing as this is, obviously it is going to have some margin of error, um, and that's just the case. All right, let's go ahead and stop the testing, and you'll see whatever information it's given you, how long it charged it, how much uh, milliampere it pumped into the battery, and then now we are going to go to the discharge test. All right, so this basically looks exactly like the the, the charging test. Um, and then obviously once you get close to zero, it's going to stop the over discharging test. Um, but yeah, even just starting this up, you kind of just get all the information you had in the last one. You can increase the current, you can decrease the current. Um, and of course, if you wanted to, you can just stop the test. Uh, and then of course it shows you the exact same data as last time, it says discharge test over. All right, and then finally, you're in the system options. You can change it to English, obviously, modify the software version, um, control the LCD brightness, power control, basically all you want. Now, the software provided here is good to go. You don't need to update it. So yeah, what you guys have is a quick walkthrough, all the demonstrations of what this battery tester does. Um, I hope if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment below, message us, email us, call us, whatever you want. Um, and then that just kind of gives you an idea of what it does compared to the Kaisi board. So thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Get all your repair parts and tools at InjuredGadgets.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. Till next time, Injured Gadgets.